Yes, we're wrapping up this chapter on malignant, can malignant um, breast cancer. Okay. Man, I'm actually glad we have you guys have a weekend to study. I'm sorry we have two tests on Monday, but you need this weekend to study. It's a long chapter, right? It's a lot of information. A lot of information. So, um, hopefully I simplified it as much as it could be simplified. Um, again, try to remember those more most common points, like uh, the most important factors concerning each of uh, each lesion or what have you, what makes it what makes it particular. Will you be using the PowerPoint to make your test? Right, the sure book is off the PowerPoint. My PowerPoint's off the book. Right, but then you made that as the book. So they're stuck in the PowerPoint that it's, it's yeah, on the, the book, book but not in the PowerPoint. Absolutely. And you're gonna have it on the chapter. Yeah, you're responsible for the chapter. It is. It is. A, it is a long chapter. You should have already read it by now, right? You should. I mean, this shouldn't be your first time hearing this information when you come to see me. You should already have read. It. I know you got real quick. I know you got. It's tough, right? Because you guys have an extra class. You used to have two classes in lab. You know, now you had an extra class. It's tough. It's not gonna get any easier for the next what three semesters? Because next semester you're in clinic every day. And then you have a research paper the semester after that, you come back and we hit the ground hard again. Mm -hmm. So this semester I won't this semester where you know taking a deep dive because we used to how it's how it's flowing and how it's working. So it is a lot more responsibility on you guys this spring semester. You know, the senior suit, they have a, a lot of tough semesters as well to get out of here. So um, yeah, guys, so please read that advance. That's the whole purpose of doing the outline, honestly. Like my the outline. I, I can, it's really for you guys to help you guys organize the information and help you get through the chapter and make sure you read. Because if you haven't read, it's going to be hard for you to come in and just study those two days and take the test. It's a lot of information, right? So it's going to be tough to do that. That's why I included some questions on here to help us, you know, you know, learn some information. Okay. So, malignant lesions, guys. Um, Malignant lesions, as we already know, they're the most common malignancy affecting women in the United States. In fact, one in eight women will, will, will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. Um, the prognosis is affected by the stage and the extent of the disease when they find this disease. And the TNM system is a classification system used for stage malignant tumors. Okay. Um, that helps assist in patient management and treatment planning. Okay. The T stands for tumor size. The N stands for nodal status, lymph node status. So we know what an abnormal and normal lymph node looks like, correct? Normal looks like a football, hypoechoic outside, hyperechoic inside with um, color Doppler in the hilum, correct? All right. And M stands for evidence of distant metastasis or metastasis. That's the TNM system. Remember, don't confuse the TNM system with the BIRAD system. The BIRAD system is a way of documenting mammographic findings. That TNM system is a way of uh, um, classifying malignant tumors. Okay? Don't, don't, don't get those two confused. So with breast, most breast cancer, most cancer cells line the breast ducts and originate in the uh, TDLUs at the junction of the extra lobular terminal with the lobule. Okay. That's exact. That's where it comes out of the uh, the stroma or comes out of the lobe or the lobule. All right. Has the highest chance of developing in the upper outer quadrant. That's where most breast malignancies are. The upper outer quadrant. And these are malignant breast masses right here, guys. There's eight of them. There are eight of them classified in two states and um, two categories: non-invasive and invasive. Okay. Non-invasive and invasive. <clears throat> Actually, there's there's say, like say for instance with the special type, there's eight all together in the category, but the special type has four associated with special type invasive carcinomas. So, and this is just one of those tables in your um, 
from your um, book that's talking about female breast cancer risk factors. Some of them including uh, advancing age, menopause, um, um, extravenous estrogen use, postmenopausal obesity, and high dose radiation exposure. Just to name a few. So, non-invasive breast cancer, also known as carcinoma in situ. Uh, malignant cells are confined within the boundaries of the duct and or lobule and have not extended past the basement membrane into adjacent tissue, meaning that it's non-invasive. It's not invading any other um, areas or, or place, meaning it has a capsule around as well encapsulated, which makes it less likely for uh, a risk of metastasis. Okay. There are two types of non-invasive disease, guys, two types. Lobular carcinoma in situ, okay, and ductal carcinoma in situ. Okay. These are non-invasive uh, carcinomas, LCIS and DCIS. All right, so lobular carcinoma in situ arises from the small ducts of the breast lobule, often multifocal, multicentric, and can be bilateral. Okay, that's important. Write that down. Often multifocal, multicentric, and can be bilateral. Uh, how, what is the multicentric? Multicentric meaning that, hmm, what is multicentric? Uh, meaning when that, this I'm sorry? When this are going, they have, uh, uh, do they mean multicenters? Multicenters? I don't think it means that. I think it means, um, like, like kind of like what she said there, they're, um, you know, like I said, they're well encapsulated, but they're they're not invading each other. They're kind of like localized. Right. Mm -hmm. All separate cells themselves. Okay. okay. Um, and LCIS, it serves as a marker for significant future risk. Um, does not typically present with specific clinical, mammographic, or sonographic features to aid in detection. So you can't like t uh, have imaging or uh, and actually see that this is LCIS. The only way to determine that, of course, is doing a biopsy. Okay. It's usually an incidental finding, actually, like in a biopsy, or let's say you had some kind of procedure done where they actually tested the tissue. Okay, so it's like an incidental finding, kind of like if you slip up and find, I don't know, a lipoma when you're doing an abdomen, something like that. It has a tendency to affect postmenopausal patients. This is multicentric. When two breast tissues are separate. They're separate. Yeah. Okay. So, again, I tried to pull out the most important points concerning those these diseases. Okay. Ductal carcinoma in situ um, is an intraductal carcinoma. It's the most common non-invasive mm -hmm. cancer. Okay. The most. You have a question, David? Okay, it's the most common non-invasive cancer. Guys, I sent this to you in PDF format um, this morning. Yeah. Um, and it's the, the final final. And it should be fixed from the, uh, the previous version. Okay. These uh, DCIS high-grade lesions are more likely to recur as invasive cancer. They're asymptomatic and, some, and with some nipple discharge. Okay. Uh, mammogram is the species of clustered microcapsulations, and they may branch out. Okay. Sonographically, the appearance varies. Um, lower grade may not be gro may not grossly descend into the duct, and suspension microcapsulations may be missed on the ultrasound. Again, you may miss those microcapsulations because sometimes the when it's when a structure is so small, ultrasound is, may not pick it up, mm -hmm. or it may not be calcified enough mm -hmm. to pick it up, right? So it may, it, though, sometimes when you see the microcalx, they may not even produce a shadow because they're not calcified enough to absorb that sound. So sound can still, even though they're echogenic, sound is still traveling through those. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, some significant uh, parts about the sonogram is that the micro, micro appears hyperechoic foci that do not shadow, like I just said. Okay. Hypochoic non-shadowing solid mass with a regular shape and or microlobulated margin. Um, distension in intraluminal <coughs> echoes or asymmetric wall thickening. Cystic fluid may help confirm its presence. 
Guys, I'm probably not gonna have any images on the exam because a lot of this stuff looks very, very, very similar. Even the label? Hmm? Even the labeling for the- No, I'm talking about ultrasound images. Oh, okay. I'm not saying I won't have any labeling on there. For sure, okay. for sure, there will be labeling. But I'm talking about ultrasound images specifically. Okay. And you can right here, guys, you can see the, the micro calcs right there. On the, and this is a mammogram right here. <coughs> Very echo, uh, I'm sorry, um, radi hyper, what's it, a hyper dense, that's what it says in there? Or, so, or radio dense, the radio dense, mm -hmm. oh, I can't forget that word. And then we have, here was similar right here with the, um, our echogenic foci, our micro couch within the mass, uh, hypochoic mass, and again, you see no shadow posterior to that. Okay. Okay. So, those are two, LCIS, ECIS. Guys, which one is the most common? ECIS. Non-invasive cancer. Okay. 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 So now we have Paget's disease, which is an uncommon cancer involving the epidermis of the nipple, often initiated by underlying uh, DCIS with the main sub-areolar duct. Okay. Uh, it can present with clinically with redness, ulceration, eczema, like crusting of the nipple and areola with bloody nipple discharge. Okay. A biopsy of that actual uh, discharge is what's gonna confirm the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. okay. Ultrasound is generally not needed to characterize, uh, unless to characterize a subareolar mass. Again, that, that, that bloody discharge that comes from the nipple is what's gonna be the determining factor when they do a biopsy on that to determine whether that is Paget's disease. And it, like I said, again, classifying, if you see crusting of the nipple and areola, it's gonna be Paget's. Okay. Okay. Those are our three non-invasive cancers, guys. What are they? OCIS, DCIS, and Paget disease. Paget disease. What is the most common? DCIS. DCIS. Okay. Okay. What is classified by what is which one is uncommon classified by crusting? Pega disease. Okay. 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 So guys, invasive cancers. <coughs> invasive cancer are invasive because malignant cells breach the basement membrane of the duct or lobule and extend into the adjacent tissues, more likely to metastasize, right? Cancer cells can penetrate nearby blood vessels and lymphatic channels, um, and those are both pathways for metastasis. <clears throat> Invasive ductal carcinoma or infiltrating is the most common breast cancer. Okay. What's the most common non-invasive breast cancer? PCAS. Okay. Okay. The most common Breast cancer total would be invasive ductal carcinoma. So both ductal carcinomas are the most common. Mm -hmm. right. So these tumors present as hard, fixed, stellate lesions that are painless and are common in the upper outer quadrant. Unilateral bloody or uh, serosogenous nipple discharge. I hope I said that right. Uh, Slow going reactive fibrosis may straighten the Cooper's ligaments, leading to skin extraction. Or retraction, I'm sorry. Uh, invasive invasive ductal carcinoma, or IDC, is a fast growing inflammatory response causing peritumoral edema. Okay. So um, on ultrasound, that'll appear as you know a hypoechoic outside. Okay. Again, sonographically, hypoechoic, irregular, heterogeneous, angular, microlobulated, spiculated, echogenic halo, angular margins, attenuation. Again, this is very, very important, guys. Taller than, taller wide. than wide, right? The benign tumors are usually wider Wide than tall. tall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's very, very important right there. Taller than wide when we're talking about malignancies. So it's, it's very important when you measure right. You may just wrong you. Yeah, exactly. It wrong. really is. It really is. It really is. And they're also a vascular tumor. Okay. Guys, write that down. Taller than wide when we're talking about malignancies. 
So, so we have our, our mammogram.